Do you know what break effect is used for? Do you know what break efficiency is used for? Did you know that you can't end a sentence in a preposition? <laughs> what the f So, Honkai Staro has some weird wording and some initially confusing stats, one of which I think will be important to know for the release of Silver Wolf and Kafka. So, let's explain this. And throughout the video, I'll have layman's terms for what I'm talking about uh, right down here. So, at the bottom of your screen. Also, join my Discord, where a growing community of Genshin and Star Rail lovers, and there are awesome people in there. And speaking of awesome people, maybe the best on earth, you can join them on my Patreon. I offer benefits such as early access to videos, so check that out if you want to help me out and help me pay rent. So, break effect. When you start the game, you're actually going to be seeing this set and probably thinking what I was thinking. Well, that'll help me break enemies faster, right? But you would be wrong, you fucking stupid baby. Instead, break effect is what happens after the break occurs. Enemies have toughness bars above their health and using specific elements allows you the ability to chip away at it. Breaking this bar does three things. Deals break damage, delays an enemy action by 25%, and applies a specific element related debuff, most of which are damage over time effects. Such as if I break with lightning here by using Serval, it will add shock onto the enemy. Break efficiency is what you would want to run if you want to break the bar faster. That is the stat that I think characters like Asta are really going to benefit from, and the one that I think most people will initially assume break effect is. Now, you may just now think break <laughs> breakfast. Now you may just think break effect is initially just some extra damage on top because, well, you can proc shock and other damage over time debuffs in other ways, but that's not entirely true. Yeah, you can proc it in other ways, but you get a higher damage multiplier through adding shock to an enemy by breaking them. This can be even further increased by building a character with the break effect stat, such as through relics. Here's my serve all without any extra break effect percentage and here's her with break effect on relics. So break effect percentage on characters increases the damage of that initial break damage, but it also increases the damage of the damage over time effect added onto the enemy. There are four elements where this is generally the same with the damage over time proccing after a break. Let's just say dot instead of damage over time because that'll get annoying. So fire burns, lightning shocks, wind, wind shears, physical bleeds and quantum entangles. Those all add dots to the enemy after the break. I'm not pulling all of this out of thin air. The initial break and the addition to the dots do have calculations and they are these. Voila. Wait, I've lost you. Come back, please don't leave. Just know that from these calculations, physical and fire have the strongest initial break damage while wind will get the best dot increase damage. These stacks here are how many times you've applied wind shear, and they max out at five, well, without simulated universe shenanigans. What's interesting is that when you break a boss with wind, they immediately get three stacks versus breaking a random mob, which will only give you one. This means that breaking bosses with wind is super effective as it really speeds up the stacking process of wind shear and allows you to get five pretty easily if you're using a character that can proc it themselves, like Sampo, who I don't have. The two elements I haven't mentioned here are ice and imaginary. I didn't mention imaginary because it's not real. Wake up. Both imaginary and ice don't have dots associated with their elements. Instead, when you break with these, they push the enemy's turn back in specific ways, either by freezing them for one turn with ice, that's all it does, don't build break effect on ice characters, or causing imprisonment with imaginary. When you break with imaginary, it pushes the enemy's turn back by a whopping 30%, with break effect percentage that would be even more, and it does imprisonment, which reduces the enemy's speed by 10%. You can actually test this yourself if you want to play around with speed in the game. You can go into your settings and you can turn on action values. And action values is just the number next to the character on the turn order. The higher the number, the worse, meaning that it takes them a lot longer to act. So as we can see here, here's the number that Welt pushes Branya to after his special without any extra break effect percentage on his relics. And here's the number that it goes to <laughs> after he has break effect on his relics. And by breaking with an imaginary character, I mean just Welt. He's literally all that we have, so. 
Now, Quantum is like if Wind and Imaginary had a baby. When Quantum breaks an enemy, it pushes the enemy's turn back by a base of 20%, and any break effect percentage is added on top of that, like with Imaginary. However, this is also where stacks come into play here, too. With Quantum, when you break an enemy, it does get a dot, Entanglement, but only for one turn. Before that dot procs, if you hit an enemy, it adds stacks, a max of five, like Wind Shear. But unlike Wind Shear, you just need to attack the enemy five times instead of having to proc the debuff five times. This means that when you break an enemy with Quantum and you add Entanglement, for every hit that you do afterwards up to five, you're adding a stack. These stacks will then multiply the damage of the dot. So if you break with Sila, then you hit that enemy five times with the party, the dot will do significantly more damage than if the enemy had only been hit once or twice beforehand. This puts Quantum in an interesting territory for break effect, and while I haven't extensively tested this yet, I think it could lead to some wacky damage and turn order shenanigans. All right, now that we know what each element does during a break, do I think that building mainly for break effect is currently the best way to build characters? Well, it depends. There currently aren't many characters that can consistently make use of its effects, or ones where it would do tons more damage than say just adding speed or crit. It's also really important to note this, but dots cannot crit in this game. So if you're really just focusing on increased dot damage from a break, then you won't be running crit on your character, which is a pretty huge setback for most character kits so far. Again, unless their kits don't rely on crits really at all. But, and this is a badass, but I don't think this will always be the case, and for some characters, break effect does currently matter. Take for instance, Welt. With extra break effect, you can push enemies back even further with him, which is such a huge buff for survivability that I think you could easily run him in a team without a shielder or a healer, and you'd be fine, which you can kind of already do, but I think with break effect, it makes him even more potent. Sampo is obviously another prime example. He's great at breaking an enemy, and his kit is centered around proccing wind shear, same with his Eidolons. And since Wynn does so well at breaking bosses that using Sampo to dot a boss over and over again is an obvious strat with him. I think you could even put some on Dan Hung, even though I don't think you'd want to waste a main stat on it currently. But I don't think break effect percent would be a completely wasted stat on him or a lot of other characters. The same is true for Asta, as she breaks so easily that adding break effect will allow her to mow through mobs even faster than she was already able to. Su Shang is another interesting case, as her kit relies on an enemy all already being broken, so running her with someone else who is guaranteed to break, like Sampo or Asta, could absolutely work, and running break effect on them to further enhance those breaks would actually work. And obviously running those guys with break effect and efficiency would mean that Su Shang's extra stat and damage boosts would be on almost full uptime. Also because of the way that Quantum's break is calculated, I don't think it would be a completely useless substat on people like Zila or Ching Chui. Zila especially since she's also so great at breaking, especially in simulated universe. Which brings me to an important detail. In the long run, you don't want to build your characters the same for all the modes in the game. This is because you get wild amounts of attack percentage buffs in simulated universe, so much so that I think that running something like break effect is definitely not a bad idea for certain characters. This is different from something like the Forgotten Hall, where you're going to want to have more attack percentage on certain characters. You can even get kind of nutty with it and run it on characters who I traditionally wouldn't suggest. Again, someone like Dan Hung. Especially if you're just using that character to break a simulated universe world boss over and over. Finally, let's talk about the future of break effect and why I think it's so, so important and why I think Knowing about it now is super important for the long run. Silverwolf and Kafka are coming around the corner, with Silverwolf being announced for the next patch and Kafka sometime after due to her inclusion in the beta. Silverwolf will be an interesting character to place in break teams, as her beta build allowed her to add weaknesses to enemies. So if she was in a team of three wind characters and herself, you could absolutely destroy an enemy with wind shear by adding the wind weakness to them and then easily proccing that boosted wind shear. It'll be fun to test this out, but I absolutely wouldn't count this strategy out. Kafka is another interesting example. Her skill in the beta procced all dots that were currently on an enemy. So if you broke an enemy with Sampo, it would add two turns of that increased wind shear damage that could be boosted by break effect. 
You would normally only get that for two turns, but if you used Kafka's skill on that same enemy, it would proc it for a third turn. That would then effectively be three turns of increased wind shear damage instead of the two, and with enough speed, obviously you could go for four or five or six like in simulated universe. It means that you'll effectively have 100% uptime on the enhanced wind shear damage, which I think will be a lot of wild dot damage. Knowing about building break effect before the release of these characters will allow you to better prepare with relics, but also to better understand this game's mechanics. Coming from Genshin, a lot of people slept on Elemental Mastery for a long time, and that's because the game didn't really make a huge point of the stat in the beginning. But now they've introduced so many characters that absolutely rely on it. Polyoverse does not include empty or wasted stats in their game. There will eventually always be a class of characters that you will build around one of their main stats. And seeing the direction that Elementary Mastery went in Genshin, I think we'll absolutely see the same with Break Effect, since it's this game's most unique and intricate system, akin to what reactions are in Genshin. So absolutely do not sleep on this stat, and definitely be prepared for them to add characters that are absolutely dedicated to it. And if you have a Welt or a Sampo and can currently really make use of it, <laughs> well, I hit you and have fun with your cool team builds, you fu- So I hope you now better understand this complicated ass stat, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. The video was only possible because of the support of my patrons, these lovely people. So thank you all so much. It means the world, and I hope that you're enjoying these videos, more weekly ones. It really means the world to me that you support me, though. And to all the rest of you, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.